Hello once again, I'm Extra Life. Welcome back to the bench. Last time we worked on fabricating a printed circuit board for our sequencer project, and today we're going to try our hand at using the soldering iron and putting some of these pieces together. Soldering parts to a PCB is ordinarily a pretty straightforward affair. You start from the bottom up with the smallest parts, put them in place, flip the board over, and solder them. However, since this is a prototype board, and I'm not supremely confident in all of the connections, we're going to take things slow and test them as we go. Another thing to be mindful of is that since this board isn't through-hole plated, meaning that the vias where it's been drilled out don't have metal in them, on any place where a component needs to connect to both sides of the board, we need to be extra careful and make sure that solder wicks through all the way and makes both connections. To keep things simple and make testing more straightforward, I'm going to start by soldering in the power supply, the connector and the filters. That way we can power up other parts of the circuit as we go and test to make sure that there's appropriate voltages before we go debugging other things. I've assembled the basic components so that we can power up and program this microcontroller to see if it works. We have the chip itself, a crystal oscillator for the clock signal, the input voltage filtering and regulation, and an LED that we can blink on and off to see if it's working. We'll program it through this miniature USB AVR programmer. This is very much like the Arduino in the sense that you connect it to a computer and it programs this chip, but this little guy connects to any circuit that you like using this 6-pin header cable. And some of these programmers provide power, but this one doesn't, so we'll use a USB power supply to give this board 12 volts while it's being programmed. We can still use the same Arduino software to program our microcontroller, but since we're using an external USB programmer, we have to select it in the menu. In this case, the one I'm using is equivalent to the Atmel SDK500. And we need to make sure that we have the right port, in this case COM4 is selected. Once we're ready, we can select the Upload Using Programmer option and program the microcontroller in place. And just like that, once we've programmed our microcontroller, we can see the LEDs blinking, indicating that the program is successfully running. And we can adjust the speed of the blinking using this potentiometer. But even at the maximum rate, the LED isn't blinking quite as fast as it should be, and that's because the clock speed of this chip isn't yet running at the maximum rate. Well, here's something unusual. This LED is blinking pretty quickly. Even though the potentiometer is turned all the way up, we can make it go faster, but at its maximum value, it should be going a whole lot slower. And if I touch the circuit board in a certain place, or even if I just blow on it, the speed goes back to normal, but then, it slowly accelerates once again. Now, it could be that the resistance of this potentiometer is changing, and therefore the digital value that this thing reads in is going down, or it could be that the clock speed is increasing, or it could be that we've discovered some kind of hitherto unknown paranormal phenomena. 
Well, the voltage on this pin isn't changing pretty much, so I think it must have something to do with the clock speed of this crystal oscillator, or maybe the internal oscillator configuration of the Arduino. Maybe it's temperature A stable and needs to balance and run for a little while before it evens out. Well, that was going really well, until I noticed the LED had stopped blinking and felt the top of the chip and noticed it had heated up to about a million degrees. Turns out I had a short from one of the 12 volt rails to one of the chips of the Arduino, and it really didn't like that. So this is toast, but fortunately, I had the chip from the Arduino itself, so I just popped that over and reprogrammed it, and it's already running at 16 megahertz because its fuses were set when they burned the bootloader at the factory, and we could do that here, but since I don't have a spare 18 mega chip to try that on, I'll order one in the mail, and we'll try again next time. But for now, since we've got the clock rate right, I think we're ready to start soldering some more parts into this board and see if we can get it working. After a little more assembly, our 7 segment display and its driver are now functional. And we can display any number we like. The display itself is not as bright as I'd like, so I think I want to swap out these resistor values. And some of the segments aren't really lighting up at all, although you can just faintly see them glowing. And I think there may be a stray short circuit between one of these transistors and one of the segments. But, as you can see, I've already made kind of a mess with mod wire on the back, so debugging this has gotten a little bit tricky. But this will do for now, since it'll let us test the module and debug it. So I think it's time to start assembling our button and LED grid. Alright, after a little more soldering, we now have all of our LEDs and buttons in place, and we can toggle on and off whichever steps we like. I'm also noticing that when more of the LEDs are on in a given row, they're kind of multiplexed by rows and columns, that the brightness is actually changing, even though, in theory, they're on for the same amount of time with the same current. I think that has to do with the open drain architecture of this I.O. expander, and there are chips that are more purpose-designed for driving matrices of LEDs so if we do a second revision of the board, that's something we could look at. And of course, I had to do a little bit more mod work on the back since I had messed up some of the connections between the switches with the columns and rows being arranged. Because there are four terminals on these switches rather than just two, you have to get the right ones. But since this is functional and we can see what's going on, I think we're ready to start putting in the last components. We need to do the digital to analog converter and the output and input jacks, as well as a couple more miscellaneous devices in here. Ta-da! Here it is, our finished PCB prototype. This board gave me quite a lot of trouble, and though it looks good from far, up close it's far from good. 
and I'm already thinking about the ways that I want to redesign it and improve it and change it. But for now, let's put that aside and think about the real question. Does it work? And I'm sure you want to hear how it sounds. So let's plug it into the synthesizer and see what kind of sequences we can make. Okay, here's our first look at the synthesizer interface. As you can see on these 16 LEDs, we have an LED running light, which is our metronome, and we have a blinking light indicating the step that we have selected. If we toggle this on, that note starts playing. And it starts playing at the pitch that we select with this potentiometer. Now I've got this running through a quantizer, so the output might not be exactly what we see, but we should be able to get a rough idea of where we are. We can also adjust the octave. By adding more steps, we can start to create a rhythm. So by using the decay or length parameter here, we can create staccato and legato phrases within the same sequence. And by using our envelope generator, we can take even more control of the way that they're articulated. Using our rotary encoder, we can control additional parameters like tempo. Right now, this is just the number of milliseconds between steps, not the actual BPM. Well, I think that counts as a qualified success. We plugged it into our synthesizer and it didn't catch fire or destroy anything else. And we were able to use it to create a sequence with articulation, variation, dynamics that we wouldn't be able to get at an ordinary 16-stage knob-driven sequencer. But there are still a couple of issues with this module. The inputs are a little bit fiddly at times and the knobs are way too close together. The ergonomics overall could use some updates, but before we start thinking about any hardware changes, I'd like to develop some of the more advanced software features on this prototype that I think will really set this sequencer apart. Things like portamento and scale selection and transposition and uh, adjustable calibration. So next time I think we'll put a spit shine on this module and start diving into some of those more advanced features. Thank you as always for watching, I hope you enjoyed that and found that informative, and I will see you next time.